Do you commit crimes? FBI, open up! Today I'm going to rank the Overwatch characters by how many crimes they have done or how serious the crime has been. And using this tier list from a productive member of society to a war criminal, we're going to rank them. Obviously, the productive member of society are the characters that have not committed any crimes. And then the war criminals are potential war criminals. Let's get started. Today I feel like breaking tradition, and we're going to start with Senyata, who is a productive member of society. I am pretty certain he just hasn't committed any crimes, and therefore he's just a productive member of society. And actually, with Senyata is Torbjorn! Something I should clarify now is that Overwatch is considered a terrorist organization in the Overwatch lore, and therefore any Overwatch activity is banned. However, with that being said, Torbjorn actually did not answer the recall, and so because of that, he actually hasn't committed any crimes. Now something that's really funny is that we're already through the productive members of society, and so it is now time to move on to the C tier, which is the Litters Occasionally tier. These are people who have committed maybe one or two crimes. Starting off, I'm going to start with Hammond. Now Hammond being an animal doesn't exactly have the same laws as we do. So him escaping from his cage on the lunar colony doesn't really count as a crime. However, with that being said, after he escaped Horizon Lunar Colony, he landed in Australia. And I don't know if you know this, but Australia and the Overwatch lore is kind of crazy. However, after he lands in Australia, he goes to Junkertown and becomes the champion. First off, we have to consider if Junkertown counts as law. So if you follow Junkertown law, but you don't follow, let's say, the United States law, are you still responsible for that crime? And so Hammond is in this weird place where he's fighting in scrap fights, but they're technically not illegal. And so for that reason, I'm going to actually just keep him in litters occasionally, because if the United States came over to Junkertown right now and they're like, hey, this hamster is fighting in scrap fights, they're not going to arrest him. I mean, maybe since he's property of Horizon Lunar Colony, he might still get caged up, but he's, he's not going to be prosecuted for any of his crimes. However, if you think differently and you think Hammond's like a master war criminal, you can actually join my Discord and you can send me a message if you'd like. I've been having trouble answering comments and all that, so joining my Discord is the best way to reach me. However, with that being said though, let's move on to Arissa. From what I can tell, Arissa has not committed any crimes except for one. While trying to help an old lady cross the street, she destroyed somebody's car! Now to be fair, Arissa is like one year old or something like that. Let me actually check. Okay, yeah, my point still stands. So obviously, Arissa has a little bit more leeway when a baby commits a crime. You can't really prosecute it as easily. And so since Arissa was trying to do the good thing, obviously wasn't intending to destroy a car, I feel like her crime isn't really a crime. I mean, it's a crime. That's why it's in the litters occasionally, but it's not like she killed someone. She just destroyed someone's vehicle. And so I think the intent is pretty important here, kind of like Hammond. Hammond just kind of had to fight because he could, and that's how he survived. Arissa was trying to help someone cross the street, and she destroyed somebody's car. Moving on, I'm going to actually be talking about Bastion. One thing in common about these three that I just did is that their crimes are a little on the edge. I'm not really confident what the prosecution would be for these three. And with Bastion, he was an Omnic of War that was shut down because he was injured, and then he was restarted in the woods, and he became a passive little Bastion. Now, does that mean he's responsible for the crimes that he was programmed to do? It's a little hard to say. Plus, we're not even sure what crimes he did. And so, since we're not sure what Bastion has actually done crime-wise, and since he never joined Overwatch, we can assume that he did break at least one law, like by infiltrating Eichenwald or Germany and starting to walk towards them because he obviously got shot and deactivated. However, a counter-argument to that could be like when you're in a war and you send troops overseas to fight in that country and then the war is over, all of your soldiers don't get prosecuted for shooting people in another country. Instead, they go home and they're war heroes. And so I'm going to put Bastion here. I'm sure he's committed a crime, but I doubt he'd be prosecuted for them, just like Arissa and Hammond. And next up on our list is actually another Omnic, Echo. Echo is the first member on this list to be part of new Overwatch. The difference between her and the other Overwatch characters is that she is more of a blank slate and just hasn't really participated in any Overwatch activity. From what I can tell, Echo was deactivated 
right as Overwatch got ended, and then she got reactivated during the reunion. And so I doubt she got the full memo that Overwatch was a terrorist organization now, and so at least out of the new Overwatch characters, I feel like she's the least guilty out of them. Next up, we got D.Va. D.Va throughout her life has not committed any crimes. However, one day she wanted to contact Overwatch to help Mecha Squad. However, during New Blood, D.Va asks her captain if they could go and contact Overwatch, and their Mecha Squad leader said no. And so D.Va then went behind their back, and she met up with Overwatch anyways, which means that she was colluding with a terrorist organization. With that being said though, the leader of Mecha Squad actually gave her permission to continue working with Overwatch, and therefore, she isn't only working for Overwatch on her own, but she's also getting permission from her squad leader now. And so D.Va's in this weird scenario where she kind of has permission to work with a terrorist organization, and at the same time went behind the backs of Korea. It's, it's a weird scenario. And so basically, D.Va has one crime, and that's just colluding with Overwatch. And now I'm going to actually put a lot of characters down because they have very similar reasons on why they're here. Those characters are Mercy, Stojern, Farah, Zarya, Brig, Reinhardt, and Tracer. Something you may have noticed is that they are all current Overwatch members that answered the recall. Mercy is there for joining Overwatch and answering the recall. Sojourn is there for answering the recall also. Farah is there for being recruited and helping in the recall. And something I forgot to mention is that they've all gone on some sort of mission. Zarya has literally the exact same crimes as Farah. And then Brigitte and Reinhardt are here because they answered the recall. But also because they like had collateral damage. And I'm not really sure what to classify that as because obviously that could have oh, it could have been the Omnics that blew it up. But like what if Reinhardt and Brig just randomly vandalized a car? Something interesting to think about. And then Tracer's there because she is very adamant about Overwatch, so I put her at the top even though Reinhardt and Brig possibly like blew someone up. But I think every mission that Overwatch has gone on, Tracer has been on, and therefore that's why Tracer is at the top of Litters Occasionally. And so everyone from Litters Occasionally and below have done something minor or just colluded with Overwatch at some point. But now we're going on to the shoplifting category, which is people who have actually done a real crime. First off, we're going to start with Lucio. So Lucio has done the basic joining Overwatch and being on a mission. But there's also something else. He actually stole something. So if you don't know who the Vishkar Corporation is, that's basically the hard light people who create hard light inventions. And they went down to Lucio's home and they promised to rebuild the place, but they ended up just making it worse. And therefore, Lucio snuck into their base or something like that and stole some of their sonic equipment, which is the gear he wears in Overwatch. Now, the gear that he stole was actually created by his father, but he still stole it from a corporation. And so technically, he broke the law by stealing. However, Vishkar Corporation is not exactly the best company ever. They kind of suck. And so I bet Lucio could get away with saying, like, they're making this place worse, blah, blah, blah. But he still stole something, and so he's here. Next up on our list is Sigma. Luckily, Sigma has actually barely committed any crimes, and his biggest crime, and possibly his only crime, is that he works for Talon. Now, Talon is a real terrorist organization that Overwatch is fighting against. And so Sigma being a part of a terrorist organization that's actually a terrorist organization is kind of bad for him. The only difference is he's kind of ignorant of all of this. Obviously, he's willingly working with them, but they also broke him out of a government facility, so they kind of saved him and gave him his own lab and his own freedom. And so his mental sanity and what crimes he has done is questionable, but it looks like he barely has done any crimes besides just working for Talon. And so he's going to be lower down in the list and just be next to Lucio, who is just a casual person who stole something. Next up is Kiriko. Kiriko's biggest crime is basically just being a vigilante. The Hashimoto took over Kanazaka and Kiriko decided to fight back. In response to the Hashimoto taking over Kanazaka, Kiriko formed something called the Yokai, I think. And the Yokai basically just do random things to annoy the Hashimoto. I think the worst thing that Kiriko has done is she's broken into a Hashimoto port and destroyed some firearms, I think. She basically just vandalized a bunch of crates and did a Boston Tea Party on them. 
And so for that reason, she's going into shoplifting, but similar to Lucio, she's kind of fighting against an organization that's already doing illegal activity anyways. And so it's hard to justify that she's the bad guy here, but she's still doing crime, so she's still there. And actually, the final person in the shoplifting category is going to be Baptiste. The most obvious thing Baptiste has done is join Talon. Baptiste was a part of Talon when they were doing some normal stuff like rescue missions. However, later on, the missions turned into assassinations and some civilian casualties. Obviously, we don't know exactly what Baptiste has done, but he's been a part of the missions to do these things. And so he's going to be higher up, even if he does regret it. He is also a part of New Overwatch, which again, isn't the worst thing ever. So obviously, his crimes and talent are much worse. And kind of like everyone else in this tier, he doesn't really deserve the crimes he has done. He's just trying to help people, and he just happened to be in the wrong group of people. However, he still has to make it into the shoplifting tier, because he's done some shady stuff, or at least been a part of some shady stuff. Next up, we have what I call the Walter White tier. This is basically the A tier, and these are the people who have committed more serious crimes. First on our list is Symmetra. Symmetra has basically one big problem. She's a part of Vishkar Corporation, which isn't a crime on its own, but... In her wiki, it says, while Symmetra does not hesitate to carry out missions of dubious morality for her company, such as digging up blackmail materials to sabotage competitors. Now, I am not an expert in corporate corruption, but digging up blackmail and doing dubious actions seems pretty illegal. And for that reason, she's in the Walter White tier because she's knowingly doing crimes and it's not even really for a good reason. With that being said, let's talk about a terrorist leader, Winston. Now obviously joining Overwatch is not the biggest issue in the world. If worse comes to worse, you can just look at it like Kiriko where she's a vigilante. Winston is basically the ringleader of Overwatch coming back. However, since Overwatch was banned by the Petrus Act, Winston knowingly went against that and caused multiple people to start committing crimes by joining Overwatch. And so it's a little hard to say that Winston is innocent in this scenario, even if the crime is kind of just, because obviously Overwatch is a good organization to us at least, because they're basically a bunch of vigilantes protecting people from Null Sector. However, the world doesn't really see it that way, and Winston is going to be the main target for restarting Overwatch, and therefore he is in the Walter White category. Next up, we got our cybernetic ninja, Genji. Genji has this weird thing where it's a little difficult to track what crimes he has done. Genji was a part of Blackwatch, so he helped with the assassination of that Antonio guy. Genji was also a part of the Shimada clan, which was a group of criminals. Albeit he was born into it. But another thing was that he joined New Overwatch, which, like Winston and all of them, isn't the biggest deal, but he still joined it, so there's another crime. But also, Genji then broke into the Shimada clan house, or I don't really know what it is, castle. And then attacked his brother, more or less. Obviously, I think Hanzo shot first. But they're both kind of in the wrong there, so we'll get to that when we get to Hanzo. Regardless, Genji has a lot of iffy crimes that I'm having a hard time deciding exactly where he should be. And I'm sure I'm missing a few things, and obviously his crimes are a little more justified than some other people's, like... Symmetra's. But Genji has sadly committed some crimes, and so he's just Walter White. Next up, we'll just get it out of the way. Hanzo. Hanzo was a part of the Shimada clan, which was a criminal organization of some sort. He also tried to kill his brother and thought he succeeded too. So if, like, the police got to him, he would have been arrested for murder. Woo! But finally, Hanzo breaks into the Shimada castle every year on his Genji's... On his Genji's on his brother's, I think, death anniversary, which during that time he attacks people, which isn't the greatest look again. Luckily, he hasn't done anything war criminal-like, and so he's in the Walter White category. And next up, we got Anna. Before we go too far, though, I think Anna and Hanzo are kind of interchangeable. Hanzo has done worse stuff, but Anna has done way more. So let's talk about her first crimes, which is espionage, assault, and theft. So we are starting on a great look. Espionage, for those who don't know, is the practice of spying or using spies typically by governments to obtain political or military power. And so obviously Egypt is going to be a little harsher on that than an attempted murder that no one really knows about. We also know her bounty is higher than Cassidy's from a voice line they have. And so again, we don't really know what she's done, but obviously she is 
a little criminal grandma, we know that. During the Bastet comic thing, apparently they also ran from the police. When I say they, I mean Soldier and Anna, but we haven't gotten the Soldier yet. And so now Anna is running from the police. However, not long after that, Anna then drugged Soldier 76, so he'd take a nap. And so now Anna has espionage, assault, theft, running from the police, and drugging people on her charges so far. Oh my god, Soldier was actually, like, unconscious for two days, too. That's like, that's almost a hostage situation, too. Oh, and it looks like Anna decided to go kidnap someone, too. Why did I not put this lady in war criminal? I think the rest of the crimes that Anna commits are justified, I should say. Because most of them have to do with Talon, which is a criminal organization, like I said earlier. And so I'm now thinking about moving her up to war criminal because she's actively going out of her way to commit crimes at this point. I'm not sure. Because she's hunting down bad people, but isn't that <laughs> illegal still? I don't know, I'm going to leave her in Walter White because you'll see in a minute that the war criminals, there's quite a few of them. However, the final person in the Walter White category is actually Cassidy, and now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to put him a little lower than Anna. The first thing I got to mention is that Cassidy is responsible for multiple heists during his time in the Deadlock Gang. And so already, Cassidy is an outlaw. I don't know if he has straight up murdered people. We obviously know he got mad at Reaper for killing someone. And so maybe he hasn't. We're not really sure. But obviously, after Overwatch disbanded, he also joined new Overwatch. And so he also has that crime under his belt. And I actually think that's possibly about it. Just he's pulled off a lot of heists and he has recruited a lot of Overwatch members. And again, I'm not really sure. I think a lot of the people in the Walter White category can be moved around just because we're not confident on all of their crimes, but we do know they've committed some sort of crimes. And so feel free to order them however you feel. But now we are on to the final tier, and that's the War Criminal tier. Let's see who made it. I should mention real quickly that obviously not all of these guys are War Criminals necessarily. It's just that they've done a lot of crimes. The first one, I have to put Ash up there. Ash is basically just a giant outlaw, even worse than McCree. It's just I don't really think I have to explain much. She's done high stealing a bunch of stuff. She blew up a train. She threatened to kill people. She tried to kidnap Echo more or less. Obviously she wasn't trying to and then she noticed it was Echo and then she's like, oh, I'm going to kidnap this person now. And we also have to think about intent, which I'm not sure how important intent is in all laws, but Ash would definitely not get that much sympathy from a judge or jury. Unlike Anna, who could be like, hey, she fights Talon. She's probably a good grandma. While you look at Ash and she's just like, yeah, that person steals my crap all the time. And so Ash to me just... An actual outlaw who does so many crimes. Next up, funnily enough, we got Mora. Mora is an evil scientist who does experiments on her own terms. The first thing I should mention is that she sucks people to death. This was during the Blackwatch Retribution event, and she is seen literally sucking their souls. I'm not confident how legal that is. We also don't know how much she has done that when she was in Talon. We don't know if she's killed anyone outside of Blackwatch. And so it's a little hard to pinpoint her crimes on that front. However, we do know she does a lot of illegal experiments. And she's a part of Talon. And she's just a chairman of Talon. However, the reason that she does it is simply because she wants to do her research. She's not there because she wants to take over the world. She's there to further science. And so, like I said, in the case with Anna, you could maybe garner a little bit of sympathy for her. However, with that being said, her crimes are kind of severe. Testing animals, testing people, being a part of Talon, which is a criminal organization. And so you could actually argue she could be higher up than this. But I just, I can't do it because I don't think she has like a confirmed murder necessarily. Obviously, her Blackwatch kills were kills. But that was at least with a legal quote-unquote organization. Blackwatch is questionable on its own. So if you think she's higher up, that's okay. She's already in War Criminal, so we'll be okay. Next up, I'm gonna put Soldier 76. Like Anna, Soldier is a little bit of a mess, so let's get into it. The first thing I must mention is that five years after Overwatch ended, Soldier 76 started doing vigilante stuff. And eventually the United States turned their attention towards him and he became a target of an international manhunt. And so Soldier 76 is already on the charts on how many crimes he has done, which it doesn't say particularly what he has done, but it actually mentions that he actually avoids killing people. And it says none of the personnel were killed, though some of them were treated for non-threatening injuries. 
And so he's obviously staying within the law, but he's still a like, criminal doing criminal activities. And just like Anna, he does go after Talon people, which again is illegal to just hunt someone down like i'm pretty sure you can still do bounty work technically if i remember correctly and so if like pablo escobar had a bounty on him and you killed him you would technically be rewarded for that rather than put in prison but from what we know talon does not have any bounty on him so he's just hunting down for all we know innocent people even though obviously we have the insight that talon is not innocent Anyway, Soldier 76 commits way more attacks, and a reward of $10 million was offered for any information leading to his capture. Therefore, he at least has a $10 million bounty on him, obviously not to kill him, but just to get him arrested. Also during the recall, he has a quote where he says, I'll do what needs to be done. Reaper, Doomfist, Maximilian. I'm not confident who that one is. Maybe that Widowmaker? Sombra, Mora, and the rest of them, they'll be dealt with. So Soldier wants to murder people. And from there, I don't think he commits any more crimes, he just wants to kill people. And so that is why he is a war criminal. Obviously, he's doing it for justified reasons. Like, if he guns down everyone in Talon right this second, and then the United States finds him, they're gonna be like, wow, this guy did us a huge favor, even though he's a giant war criminal. And so that's why he is lower down. Next up is Sombra. Now, Sombra is actually a very interesting one. So first off, we gotta mention she's a part of Talon, criminal organization, all that good stuff. But she's also a giant hacker. And hacking things like the government is pretty serious. And I'm sure the government would want Sombra taken care of before Soldier. Because the most Soldier can do is just kill some people that, you know, are already bad people. So like, why shouldn't they just let him run around? He's literally doing their job for them. But Sombra, on the other hand, is actively getting information, hacking stuff all that stuff. She also killed people in her cinematic, so there's one thing. And so Sombra is a full-on talent agent, and for that reason we know she's doing a lot of crimes, she has her own motives, she needs to be stopped, and yeah, that's why she has so many crimes, I don't really have anything else to say. She just has a lot of crimes, so she's up here. The next three I think are kind of interchangeable, and I'll explain why now. That is Roadhog, Junkrat, and Junker Queen, and I'm not putting them here just because they're all Australian, I actually seriously think they can all be interchangeable. So the first thing is Roadhog and Junkrat. The reason I think they are interchangeable is because basically all of their crimes they have committed together, with maybe some exceptions, like Roadhog has threatened someone without Junkrat, and Junkrat has obviously done some unlicensed explosions. And so that's why I personally put Junkrat above Roadhog, just because Roadhog has probably done a lot of stuff. I think he- oh wait, no, Roadhog actually joined that group that- attacked a power plant or something. Yeah, that's why he has that gas mask. I forgot about that. Ooh, maybe Roadhog has actually done more crimes than Junkrat. I'm gonna chase that right now. Hopefully I'll put it up on screen so you guys know what I'm talking about. But Junker Queen, on the other hand, is the queen of Junker Town. Now, at first I thought, man, Junker Queen actually doesn't really have that many crimes. I mean, she's the leader of Junker Town, but Junker Town is not necessarily bad on its own. It just has a lot of criminal activity, but that doesn't mean it itself is actually a criminal place. And so I'm like, oh, Junker Queen could actually have less crimes than I thought. But then we get into the really gritty details. So the first thing I gotta mention is that Widowmaker and Junker Queen have a voice line interaction that's kind of an oof. So the first thing is Junker Queen's like, how many widows have you made? Widowmaker says, I don't keep track. And Junker Queen goes, I'm sure I've done more which implies that she's killed a bunch of people. Now, someone in my comments said something about like, oh, Junker Queen could be talking about executions, like good executions, I guess. But that doesn't really fit into the principles of Junker Town, because according to the wiki, the rules are no Omnics, pay your share, find your keepers, settle your scores, and troublemakers will be exiled. Not executed, exiled. And so Junker Queen has casually just murdered people. She's also a racist against Omnix, which I'm not sure is illegal in all parts of the world in the Overwatch lore, but in at least like half the places at least I'd say, she would be committing a discrimination crime. And some people have brought up that since Junker Town has different rules than the rest of the world, her crimes are less severe, and I kind of agree, but not really. We have to kind of talk about it in a, like a broad sense. Like, just because something is legal in one country doesn't mean that they should be in the litters occasionally. Uh, just Junker Queen casually murders people on the side, you know. Silly Junker Queen. 
doing her murders again. Now, Gentry Queen has sadly committed a lot of crimes. Even at first glance, it doesn't look like she's done anything that bad. And then you realize she's killed people. And so I feel like you move Junker Crane, Roadhog, and Junkrat around just because they've just committed a lot of crimes, which I don't know if I said this, but Roadhog and Junkrat committed like arson, theft, and murder, so they're pretty high up there too. I think this is an okay order. Next up on our list is Widowmaker. Widowmaker luckily has kind of a simple background. She kills people. Now Roadhog, Junkrat, and Junker Queen apparently have all killed people also, and Sombra. But I'm going to take a reasonable risk here and say that Widowmaker has probably done more killing. And since she's a part of Talon, she's obviously being hired to assassinate people all the time. And so I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that she deserves the war criminal tier. And like I said, if you disagree with the order, that's fine. Next up is Ramatra. I luckily don't think I have to explain much with Ramatra. Ramatra is literally the leader of Null Sector. So Ramatra is basically just the head leader of a terrorist organization, and so I think that's just capital criminal activity. However, there's a couple people I think are worse. The first one that I think is worse is Doomfist. What's the only step up above Null Sector? Talon. Guess who's the leader of Talon? Doomfist. Now, I'd actually argue that Ramacha has probably done more crimes, if you know what I mean. But Doomfist is technically higher up on the criminal ladder, and so that's why he's just above Ramacha. I'd actually argue that Ramacha has done more of the crimes, but Doomfist is just higher up because in the end of the Retribution event, I think, Doomfist is like hiring Ramacha or talking to him or just making an alliance. And so Doomfist is just higher up because he's higher up in the criminal ladder. With that being said, it's time to rank Reaper. Now Reaper is a little bit of a hard one because I'd argue that he is the most vicious person out of anyone on the Overwatch roster. Because he actively commits probably more murders than Widowmaker, and he also has such a high spot in the Talon ranking in like the council, which probably means that I should move more up a little bit, but I'm not going to. And so I'm going to actually put Reaper in between Ramatra and Doomfist again. I'm not really confident where to put Reaper exactly. Like his crimes are so all over the place that I'm not really confident where to begin. And it all pretty much has to go with he's trying to kill someone. He's attacked someone. He's killed someone. And it basically is that over and over again. And so Reaper I think has committed the most crimes and the worst crimes. Again, I think you can just kind of mix and match these guys. I don't think it's a big deal which of these threes are on top. Just simply because they've all done so many freaking crimes that it's hard to calculate where they would be. But with that being said, we got a problem. We got May. Now, a lot of you may say, why is May still here? Has May committed multiple atrocities like Reaper? Has May led an army of Omnics to attack King's Row? Is May trying to make a world-dominating terrorist organization? Well, I can tell you what May has done. May has something called an endothermic blaster. Now, I don't know about you, but endothermic blasters seem a little bit cruel and unusual. Now, cruel and unusual punishment can also be considered torture. Now, I don't know if you know this, but torture is against the Geneva Convention, and therefore... May goes into the Breaks the Geneva Convention tier. Thanks for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed. I don't know if you can tell but as this video has gone on my throat has died more and more and that's because I've been sick for like a week and so the video quality has probably dropped a little bit but hopefully once I feel better it'll be a little easier to make videos. But anyways I hope you guys enjoyed. Like and subscribe. If you feel like I missed anything, because I'm sure I have, feel free to comment down below. I'll try and read comments on this particular video just because I'm confident I've missed something and I don't want people saying like, Hey, uh, Hamster has committed mass genocide multiple times. And so I'll try and save you guys the time by hopefully harding them. But again, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys later.